<laughs> I've got a profile. Yay. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> 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 <sighs> Yeah. 25% there, you really... Pick that into a sex fest. <laughs> That's supposed to be the crowd. <laughs> turned oh, into yeah, a crowd what, sex what club? <laughs> Let's May be I? serious, just a profile. May mm. I? You can. Thanks. <laughs> I was looking through the uh, Dean Windass <clears throat> Hall of Fame, or Dwarf, for, for short, <laughs> and I noticed that um, Jose Luis Chilever and Georgie Campos... Uh, there's only two. There's only two keepers in there. Yeah, and we need three. Yeah, you're going to go to a big tournament. We, we, we ain't yeah. got enough. What if, <laughs> what if one of them goes mental, which both of them definitely will? <laughs> That's it. We're sort of hoping at the moment like two negatives make a positive. <laughs> both clearly mental. That one, mate. Well, Thomas and Kono and a couple of the Cameroonians are in there, but they, yeah. they're probably lying about their age. So, um, I've got Dino's off. Oh, good choice. Good, yeah, good yeah, choice. Yeah, uh, he's go- he's going to come in and. Uh, Shore it up. Go God, to that number sub one Sub editors would have loved him every January, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> playing now. One of the greatest keepers of all time, if you oh, yeah. me saying. Well, I've got to give his date of birth before Sorry, we talk about that. Yeah. Uh, born February 28th, 1942. 25 years before the summer. Though. Straight Won in. this sperm race. <laughs> yeah, Straight yeah, in. Yeah. Beautiful. Mamma mia. Uh, he um, was, of course, a uh, former Italian goalkeeper and, as Luke said, one of the greatest goalkeepers of all time. He is still Italian, it's worth pointing yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he... Uh, well, an absolutely incredible player. Um, interestingly enough, though, when he was 14, he was rejected by Inter Milan and Juventus. You're not old enough. Because he was too small. Yeah, but he was never that tall. He must have only been well, about six foot anyway. Well, he was six foot. Yeah, so for a keeper, that's not massively <clears throat> tall. Not these days. I suppose it might have been back then. However, his grandmother could have maybe... Maybe she takes a bit of the credit because he was a bit small, so she used she to had a feed rack. him... She well, she probably, <laughs> yeah, she she probably a medieval rack. She probably did have a uh, rack, but um, she used to feed him up on eggs. Because everyone knows everyone who eats <laughs> eggs is a taller. Yeah, eggs make you tall. Yeah, exactly. That's so. <laughs> worked for him. So um, don't, don't don't challenge it. <laughs> well, five years later, Zeno's off was putting in some good displays for his uh, his local side, Marianese, and uh, some of the uh, the scouts for the big sides were. Getting to have a little bit Sniffing of a look around. Exactly. Mm, they, who's uh, that egg-covered boy? <laughs> <laughs> we must sign him. Or we'll have egg on our faces. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, he'd uh, grown by then. I think he was pretty much six foot. And uh, Eggs, that'll be. Udinese um, came in for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't play too much for Udinese. And he was uh, signed a couple, of years, a couple of years later by uh, Mantova. And this is where his career really sort of took off. Um, in, in 1966, he was being considered for the uh, it, uh, Italian uh, World Cup squad. However, he didn't get into the 66 World Cup uh, because apparently the, um, the uh, Italian coach at the time, Edmondo Fabri, um, there was talk of that he, he didn't want to show favouritism to Dino's off because uh, the coach was from Mandeva himself. Oh, right, OK. Mm. It was a bit of a shame, a bit really. of politics there. Yeah. Perhaps. Who'd have thought in Italian football? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it was in uh, 1967 that uh, Napoli came in for him and they uh, paid 130 million lira and uh, a goalkeeper swap uh, for the man. And uh, he he had a great time at Napoli. He said that, uh, I have great memories of my time there. It's such a lively city. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, he was at Napoli for a good few years, and he made his international debut um, in 1968 while he was at Napoli in a 2-0 win against Bulgaria, and that was in the uh, UEFA European Championship quarter-final. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, they Italy, won it. Italy won, won it. it. Yeah, they yeah, did yeah. win it. They beat Yugoslavia in a, in a replay in the final. And so after his, only his fourth international appearance, he'd got a, a, a winner's medal, a European Championship winner's medal. I'll stick that in the locker, yeah. eh? Uh, he was left out of um, the starting eleven in the 1970 World Cup. Um, he lost his place, and uh, in the 1978 World Cup, he described himself as not being at his best. Mm. That was in the World Cup in Argentina. Um, in 1972, he signed for Juventus for 330 million lira, and he 20 won pounds. Yeah, <laughs> 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 and he won uh, uh, the he won six Serie A titles with them, the Coppa Italia twice, and the UEFA Cup once. But his greatest achievement, of course, was when, whilst he was playing for Juventus, he captained Italy to the uh, 1982 World Cup win, where he became the oldest uh, World Cup f- uh, final winner at the age of 40. Incredible. Oh, Isn't he only the second keeper to ever captain the side of the World Cup as well? Very true. Was and the other guy also Italian? That's right, yeah, yeah. Um, Giampiero uh, Combi, yeah. I think is how you say it. In the 30s, wasn't it? 
That's right, in the 34 World Cup. Mm. Um, and of course, Zoff was voted uh, best goalkeeper of the tournament. And Paolo Rossi says that uh, Dino was Italy's most important player in 1982. He was the one who truly represented the team. He was an example to all of us, myself more than anyone. Oh, excellent. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. Uh, the one thing, though, however, that Zoff missed out on was the, um, the, the European Cup, where he was uh, twice a loser in the final against Ajax in 73 and then uh, Hamburg uh, years later. Um, however, the, his last final, that was his sort of farewell to the game. He retired um, to become a goalkeeping coach at Juventus. Do you reckon there was a Zoffy morning when that happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zoffy morning, like yeah. death. Yeah, 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 yeah. Works on so many levels. So, yeah. yeah, multi layered. You're wasted on this show. Yeah. <laughs> no, you are wasted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sort yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was offered a goalkeeping coach um, role at Juventus, um, but he it wasn't enough for him. He said, as far as I was concerned, it was a dead end job. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> well, no, but that is, to be fair, that is because he, he had designs on becoming a manager. You don't. And mm. I think it is generally quite hard for goalkeepers to become managers. You don't get an awful lot of them no. doing it. Yeah. Mm. No, absolutely. It's very rare that you see that. I wonder what his tactics were. Eggs, probably. <laughs> <I imagine. laughs> um, well, he, he um, was offered and took the post of coach uh, Italy's Olympic team in the uh, Seoul Games, and uh, he impressed enough to be offered the manager's job at Juventus in 1988. Um, he, he was sacked in 1990 by Juventus, but, but he did win um, the UEFA Cup with them. Okay, yeah. It would be quite interesting to see how many goalkeeping managers have won Things, major yeah, tournaments. Yeah, that's right. There aren't many of them. Well, he did win the the UEFA Cup and the Coppa Italia with Juventus okay, yeah. in, the, in the short time he was there, but obviously not good enough for them. So uh, he was he was on his way. Uh, he then joined Lazio um, in '94. Um, I think he was president of Lazio in '94, and then in '98 he was appointed coach of the national side, and he took him to the second place in Euro Championships 2000. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were so unlucky not to win that final. Yeah. Mm. Um, but a few days after the final, he uh, resigned uh, following some strong criticism from uh, a certain. Uh, Silvio Berlusconi. Oh dear. Oh dear. Who got smashed in the face this week by a statue mm. by a mentally ill man? Well, that's me right. Mentally ill, satirical, <laughs> genius. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's a shame for you. The thing is, there's so many, literally so much politics in Italian football and such a massive turnover of staff and manager positions yeah. as well. That's it's right. so hard for somebody who doesn't <clears throat> want to play the game. I'm not saying that Zoff didn't want to play the game, but the, the, the political game. Yeah, so yeah, to speak. yeah. It's, it, it's difficult. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I mean, he returned to Lazio, but it didn't stay very long there. And then uh, in 2005, he coached uh, Fiorentina and saved them from relegation. But he didn't. He didn't uh, last much longer there. So uh, he's never really had a long stint at uh, the managerial game. But he's done okay, though. Yeah, he's done well. The UEFA yeah, Cup. Yeah, and that and meant so much more back then, as we've discussed yeah. many, many times. That's and the right. final Euro 2000, not to be seen. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Let's not forget he was all right in goal as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, yeah. And uh, I'm glad you bring it back to that. Peter. <laughs> uh, he was named the third greatest goalkeeper of the 20th century, uh, behind uh, Lev Yashin and Gordon Banks. And he holds the record for the longest playing time without allowing uh, goals in international tournaments. 1,142 minutes. That's set between 1972 and 1974. A long game. And he has, 100, <laughs> he has 112 caps for Italy, and he is the third most capped player for the Azzurri. Mm -hmm. First being? Maldini. Fabio Cannavaro. Ah, oh, mm. Maldini must be second. Sure, yeah, sure. And uh, Maldini is second. <laughs> Um, Enzo uh, Berzot, who was the Italian coach at Spain in 1982 World Cup, he described uh, Dino Zoff and a particular moment at the World Cup, and he said, Dino Zoff, he was a level-headed goalkeeper, capable of staying calm during the toughest and most exhilarating moments. He always held back both out of modesty and respect for his opponents. At the end of the Brazil match, which of course they beat Brazil 3-2, yeah. and that was the much fancied Brazil side. Yeah. At, the, at the end of the Brazil match, he came over to give me a kiss on the cheek without saying a single word. For me, that fleeting moment was the most intense of the entire World Cup. <laughs> Sounds a little bit turned on, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, though. That's right, yeah. In November 2003, he was voted Italy's golden player, the best Italian player of the last 50 years. Brilliant. Now, They've all, the, few. all yeah. the countries in Europe actually uh, did this, and uh, th each football federation from the countries, football association, had to put forward a player, and uh, Dino Zoff was, was voted the Italian one. That's the Eng English one was? Um, Charlton. Bobby Moore. How oh, was it? And the Welsh one? John Charles. John Charles. John yeah. Charles. Right. And there we are. I shall end with a quote from uh, Gitano Surya, who was uh, Juventus and uh, Italian former player. He said, Dino always protected me as if I were his little brother. Oh, How about that? Nice. And you I mean, can't do those off. off. <laughs>